I'm very proud of the bill we tabled today, and I think uh, it represents values, our values. It is unthinkable to me that in a free society we would legitimize discrimination against citizens based on their religion. I think a liberal society based on, uh, on fundamental freedoms and, and openness uh, must always protect fundamental individual rights. This law that's being proposed is something that divides the population, that divides the, the province instead of bringing people together. Lots of reaction today to the Quebec government tabling its secularism bill. As we told you earlier in the show, this would see public workers in positions of authority banned from wearing religious symbols. It also invokes the notwithstanding clause. So is Ottawa preparing for a fight here with Quebec? How will this legislation impact the debate, for instance, in the federal election? Chantal Hébert is in Montreal tonight, Andrew Coyne in Toronto, and Althea Raj also there in Toronto tonight. Good to see everybody. Chantal, I'll start with you because uh, you're there, you're in Quebec. Uh, the, the premier says that this is an attempt to unite Quebecers. Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand how that would be. So what, what do you think he means when he suggests that this is going to unite people in that province? Uh, I'm not sure about uniting, but uh, for sure he believes he has a mandate that was front and center in his uh, election platform. And uh, he is the third government in a row, after a liberal and a, a, a PQ government, to come up with a version of, of a law uh, that uh, deals with the same areas. Uh, so Mr. Legault feels he's on a fairly uh, large consensus that uh, people want the Quebec government to be mm -hmm. uh, affirming uh, its secular uh, state in a way that actually targets, in this case, individuals. And I think what he probably also meant is by using the notwithstanding clause, he's sheltering his law from a lot of court challenges. And so he's getting, uh, he thinks, the debate over with. And is that fair to say, Andrew, that there's nothing really else that can be done? Uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in Quebec. We don't know what's going to happen federally. Mm. Uh, it's certainly, he can claim a mandate. There's no doubt about it. Um, Sometimes minority rights uh, are not particularly popular with the majority in, in any society. That's why we have things like the Charter of Rights to Protect them. That's why that's such a danger to give governments things like the Notwithstanding Clause. This is now the second government uh, after the government of Ontario to trot this out in very specious circumstances. Uh, and it ought to give us a lot of pause on this because if the courts can't stop this, um, then we, that's, that's been our backstop until in recent decades. And we've got some decisions to make as a society of what are going to be the terms on which we live together, what's the terms of our federal union, uh, if this kind of thing can go on. Yeah, except, as, as both of you pointed out, and Althea, I'll put it to you, he, he did get a mandate for it. It was, it was clear that he was going to move ahead with it, that the legislation was going to be perhaps clearer than we had seen in the past. So it makes it hard, does it not, Althea, for someone to say you, you shouldn't do this, even if you know, people may not think it's fair or right. Yeah, and I think the other point to that is that uh, the majority of Quebecers do support this piece of legislation. So um, I think he can accurately say that he is trying to, um, or he hopes that he's trying to unite people over this idea. Um, Quebecers have uh, voted for this, and they tell the public opinion polls that the, um, that the pollsters that this is something that they support. Um, I think where uh, it gets a bit trickier is what the federal government's response to this mm -hmm. is. And I don't think there is an appetite to talk about disallowance and the federal government's role in um, getting rid of this piece of legislation in Quebec. But it does put the parties in an interesting position in the lead up to uh, a federal election. Um, Mr. Scheer, perhaps more than most, because he's hoping to pick up a lot of the seats at the CAC uh, won in the last election campaign. And we've seen uh, both um, conservative MPs in Quebec and New Democrat MPs in Quebec uh, not go uh, with the party line on uh, minority religious issues. And so I think that causes a bit of problems when it comes to caucus management and candidate management as well. But let's, get away, it, from, yeah, go ahead, Andrew, let's yeah. get away from the dry politics of it, though. Do we want to live in a society that tells observant members of religious minorities you cannot work in positions of authority in the public service. It was particularly poignant, I think, seeing Jagmeet Singh, yes. the federal NDP leader, speaking of this, because this bill would prohibit the leader of the federal NDP from working in a position of authority in the public service in Quebec. Um, is that the kind of society? Are these the terms on which we're going to live together? Is that kind of th the kind of 
uh, discrimination against religious minorities that we're prepared to countenance. Okay, uh, but, but, but okay, is there but, an uh, appetite uh, uh, for the federal government to do anything about it? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Okay, uh, so so we, we, we still live, uh, uh, and we can have a debate over whether the notwithstanding clause should exist, but we do live in a rule of law uh, environment, and in that environment, uh, what the Quebec government is doing is both constitutional and legal. Yeah. The other point I would bring is that this debate in Quebec has been ongoing for 10 years. Yes. Everyone has had their say again and again and again, and this is where we are today. And I would argue that over those 10 years, very few minds were changed one way or another. Uh, so this discussion that is restarting will probably end sooner rather than later because everyone has had their say. But, now, yeah. federally, I looked at those three leaders today of the main parties, and I didn't see a lot of light between what they said. And to me, that basically means that together they are neutralizing the issue yeah. in the next federal campaign because none of them is going to be coming to Quebec saying, I'm nicer about this than the next guy. And the reason for that is that there are a lot of voters uh, in Canada and in Quebec uh, who actually do not want someone to be dancing uh, with a government on issues like that. Andrew Scheer on this was categorical. I think he's the only one who needed to say it, that he as yes. prime minister would never do something yes. like that. It was obvious that Jagmeet Singh and Justin Trudeau would not. Is there not the right for a federal government to say, uh, as Andrew's suggesting, we we don't want our country to turn into pockets of acceptance or not. Well, wh and whether they will or not, of course, is a different question. But look, this was part of the terms of confederation. This long predates the Charter of Rights. Long before there was a charter, the idea was the federal government would protect local minorities from the depredations of local majorities. Um, have we given up on that idea? Are we just basically going to shrug our shoulders and say what happens in someone's backyard is they're not really part of our society. We don't, we don't really care. We can, we, you can just basically do it and, and basically enunciate the principle of provincial rights and the rest of us just have to look the other way. Is that the, you know, this will be a decision. This will be a test. Yes, but, and but maybe we'll all just shrug and say it's fine. It's, it's just religious minorities. It doesn't concern us. But, maybe, what's maybe your what we'll but what is your solution? Well, I, that's, that's the, for, the first thing before the solution is to, to say, is it even our business? And a lot of people are prepared to say, it's not our business. It's just, but, it's just happening in Quebec, so therefore it doesn't matter to the rest of Canada. So let's have is, that debate okay. first, and when, then we can decide what kinds of measures are in order. Uh, but when you yeah, say... Okay it is your business, then you need to have a policy yes. That's uh, not answer. That's enough to say and I care. I really don't think we're going to have a discussion about okay. disallowance before the next federal election. Okay, no. uh, yeah, okay, let's, okay, let's, that, that's a good conversation. Let's move to the, the <laughs> other thing that we've been talking it's about for weeks related. and weeks and weeks now. Um, the mm -hmm. SNC uh, controversy affair, it, it seems to, you know, in, in spite of everything, continue along. And this week it moved into this other area around uh, leaks of other things. Um, here's what the Prime Minister had to say on that today. First of all, we uh, condemn uh, the, the number of leaks that have happened recently of uh, confidential information that has been uh, let out over the past, uh, past weeks. I certainly uh, would wish that people who have uh, access to confidential information would keep it confidential. I, I want to attack this from the perspective of what is the damage that is done to institutions, to people's confidence in democracy, from any of those things when we see the story shift to uh, questions about judicial appointments and other information that gets leaked out there from someone. Uh, we don't know where. Do you want to tackle that, Andrew? Well, the leaks are obviously denounced by everybody, including the people who have been engaging. Leaking. <laughs> Uh, it's a pretty short list of people who could have leaked this. I don't think leaking itself is the issue. I think it matters what you're leaking for. Yeah. In the same way, you know, when we give anonymity to sources, it matters why, they're, why they want anonymity, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Leaking information where you're blowing the whistle on wrongdoing, it seems to me, is distinguishable from leaking information to smear the whistleblower. Uh, and I think people have to be able to make these reasoned dis distinctions between these situations. But again, all of this is, is essentially designed to distract from the central question, which is not what was Jody Wilson's record as, as, as Attorney General, Minister of Justice, what were her motivations, 
but the central question which we still do not have an answer to, which is, what was the government of Canada doing trying to interfere in a criminal prosecution? I, I, except, um, except if that is part of the story, the motivation. Yeah, yes, no? uh, and I think, I think both questions are legitimate. Uh, okay. Yes, we want to know more about uh, what people have to say about the SNC-Lavalin uh, that may be relevant to that particular issue. But if part of the argument is that the attorney general was fired, demoted, shifted on account of SNC-Lavalin, it also informs the debate that there could have been other reasons. Uh, the Supreme Court leak, I find it uh, regrettable when people's names are brought in that uh, applied for mm -hmm. uh, positions under uh, uh, confidentiality. Yes. That being said, I heard about the fact that there was a difference of opinion without the specifics on this very issue at the Supreme Court long before SNC-Lavalin landed on Jody Wilson-Raybould's desk. And it was on that basis that the day after the shuffle I said on this show that the relationship between the Prime Minister and the Justice Minister had soured over the course of a number of files. I knew nothing about SNC-Lavalin mm -hmm, then. Mm -hmm, so it does mm -hmm. inform why she was shuffled, and there seems to be general agreement that had she not been moved, we would not be talking about the Sensei Labelle. Uh, Althea, what, what are your concerns when you see that kind of information coming out, and also people's names being dragged into a story that they have, has nothing to do with them, essentially? Yeah, I mean, that's really unfortunate that you apply for a job and that everybody knows that you applied for a job that probably should not happen in the federal government. But I think deeper, though, when it comes to the Supreme Court, you don't want to move to, I, I think most Canadians would agree, they don't want to move to a system like the United States where we recognize or we think that this judge is a conservative judge and this judge is a big L liberal judge. And I think part of what was leaked um, spoke to where the prime minister's office and where those players who are making those decisions, where they were... Uh, pigeonholing those justices, and, and that is a big risk. Um, when it comes to the relationship between Jody Wilson-Raybould and the Prime Minister's office, yes, I agree with Chantal. It was, I mean, actually, there were newspaper stories about uh, the debate with regards to the justices. But when leaks do happen, they do help illuminate the conversation. Part of the leak uh, earlier this week um, with regards to Jody Wilson-Raybould's uh, pleading for um, Justice Joyal to join the top court was that she had written a 60-page memo. Well, that's a little bit of detail, but it goes to illuminate J Gerald Butts's testimony where he said, well, I couldn't understand why she didn't ever put anything in writing about any of her concerns because we were so used to getting all these yeah. lengthy memos. Oh, well, you know, that's a little bit of detail that it's not really part of the story, but it helps understand the process and what was really happening it, behind the scenes. I have to let Andrew take the last word. We still, well, we haven't there. seen that 60-page memo. We have their word for it. But again, these are peripheral questions. Even the question of whether she was fired for resisting the Prime Minister's uh, pressure on her to, to lean on the prosecutor is a secondary question. The main question, which is actually not denied, is that they pressured her. All that we're engaged in the debate is them saying it's okay to pressure her because we we're concerned about jobs, or it's okay to pressure her because we only did it 20 times, or all these attempts to try and muddy the central question. So, as I say, we keep chasing down these, these uh, back alleys and, and rabbit holes about things that aren't actually central to the questions. But you agree with what you agree. I think what you said off the top was was the important thing that if sources are going to be leaking information like this, it would be good to at least understand where they're coming. And they certainly shouldn't be leaking things, not just that bring the, the judge's name into it, yeah. but that imply he's some kind of extremist who can't be trusted with the Charter of Rights. They besmirched his good name and by extension tried to make her look erratic in the process. And there's no foundation to that whatsoever. Although a leak followed the next day that looked like it came from a different side. Anyway, okay, i got to leave it there. I, I imagine we'll talk about this again. Thank you all. Before we go, be sure to subscribe to Ad Issue, the podcast. Look for it on iTunes, any major podcast app, our website, cbcnews.ca slash the national.